I talk a lot on this channel about the environment and all the things that we can do to make the world a cleaner, better place. But it turns out there is one really simple thing that you can do that would make a huge improvement to the environment as a whole. Don't die. On October 3rd, archaeologists in Egypt announced the discovery of 59 well-preserved wooden coffins containing mummies that were buried more than 2,500 years ago. And despite dating back to the late period of ancient Egypt, they were remarkably well-preserved. According to Khaled Al-Anani, the Egyptian Tourism and Antiquities Minister, quote, I have witnessed the opening of one of these coffins. The mummy seems as if it was mummified yesterday. Cool. Just what 2020 needed. Who had ancient Egyptian curse for October? The ancient Egyptian mummification process is pretty well understood at this point. And of course, they did it mostly for royalty and the nobility of the time. And they did it because they believed that they would need their body to be able to continue living in the afterlife. And the Egyptians were not alone. There were many cultures around the world that built huge structures to house their dead, like the Serpent Burial Mound by the Adena tribe in what's in modern-day Ohio. In fact, burial practices are considered one of the earliest signs of human civilization. The awareness of our own mortality and our ability to prepare for that end. It's one of the few things that sets us apart from the animals. I should say that is a hotly debated statement that I just made. There's a ton of anecdotal evidence out there, even by animal behaviorists, that animals do understand death and mourn the loss of others in their group, especially among social animals like gorillas and monkeys, chimps, and elephants. In fact, remember Coco the gorilla, the one that could do sign language? She was asked one time what happens when you die, and her response was, comfortable hole by. Now sure, the ancient Egyptians had pretty much perfected the embalming technique with the technology that they had at their time, but that doesn't hold a candle to what we can do today, and we do that for pretty much anybody. Typical embalming today pretty much perfectly preserves the body, and how they do that we'll get into in just a second, but suffice to say, that corpse is going to be around a while. Which is kind of weird when you think about it. You know, we embalm ourselves way more than the Egyptians did, and they did it because they believed that they needed their bodies in the afterlife. Very few people today believe that. So why do we do it? This hasn't always been the case. What made it popular, in the United States anyway, was Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln made it popular. After his assassination, his body was kind of driven around the country on a funeral train. You know, they didn't have broadcast TV back then. They couldn't just shoot the funeral and put it out there for everybody to see. If people wanted to collectively share in this mourning, Lincoln had to go to them. Now, of course, they couldn't have Lincoln going around looking like the Crypt Keeper. And keep in mind, photography was still a pretty new thing at the time, and people were going to be taking a lot of pictures of this corpse as it was going around the country. So they basically just pumped him full of embalming fluid, basically plasticizing him so that he wouldn't decay at all. And that popularized embalming and open casket wakes. And of course, once the funeral industry realized just how much money they could make from this, well, let's just say a lot of people were talked into it across the table in the most sensitive moment of their lives. But it's also a cultural thing. People grieve differently. For some people to be able to spend a little bit of time with their dead loved one's body after they die, it can give them a sense of closure. And of course, they want them to look as, well, lifelike as possible, or as close to the way they looked when they were alive as possible. And the way they do that This is a very sensitive topic, and I'm going to be getting into some really gruesome stuff here. So if you're not comfortable with discussions about very specific things that are done with dead bodies, I'm going to put timestamps down in the description, and it'll show up in the little timeline down below. You can skip ahead and move around however you want, wherever you're comfortable with. I'm just giving you that heads up, okay? You've been warned. The first thing they do is they apply massage to the muscles of the body to get rid of rigor mortis so that they can more easily position it in the way that they want to. And in some extreme cases where the body's been deformed by some kind of disease or condition, they do sometimes snip tendons to, to put it where they want it. Massage cream is used on the face and hands to make the skin more pliable. Facial features are then set by putting cotton up the person's nose, eye caps behind the eyelids, and then putting a mouth former in the mouth. Cotton or gauze is put down the throat to keep purging fluids from coming back up, and then the mouth is sealed shut with a, with a wire or suture. Glue may be used on the eyelids or the lips to keep them in an appropriate position, and they shave the face if that's necessary. So then the embalming begins. And this is done by injecting embalming fluid into an artery while the blood is then drained out of a vein or directly from the heart. Then comes what's known as cavity embalming. 
This requires the use of a trocar. This is basically a long pointed metal stick with a, a hose attached to it. They stick it in through the navel and then they puncture the stomach, the lungs, the large intestine and the bladder and they suction out all the juices and fluids and gases that may have collected in there. And then they insert cavity fluid, which is a stronger form of the embalming fluid into the cavity and then sew you up. The anus or vagina may be stuffed with cotton to prevent seepage and sometimes they actually put a very close fitting plastic garment down under there. After this, the final touches are put on the body, the nails are manicured, the hair is fixed, any kind of makeup or, or rebuilding of the face that needs to be done, they do with wax and on the hands, and then they dress it up and get it ready for presentation. Yeah, you know how food photographers do a lot of little tricks to make the food look nice and juicy for the camera, like applying Vaseline to meat or just straight up painting lettuce and stuff? It's, it's kind of like that. I guess the good news is that if there ever was a zombie uprising and all the dead rose from the grave, then you wouldn't have to worry about them eating your brains because their jaws are going to be wired shut. But the fact is we don't do this to win any beauty contests in the cemetery 20 or 50 years down the road. We do it for the one week after we die so that our loved ones can spend their final moments with us, with us looking as lifelike and good as possible. And that's a personal decision and it's different for everyone. But this choice to be embalmed, it does come with a cost. The first cost is monetary. The average price for a funeral is between $9,000 and $12,000. Now, of course, that includes the casket and the burial plot and all those other things. But there's also an environmental cost. And the first people that are affected by that are the embalmers themselves. The chemicals used in the embalming process are extremely toxic and carcinogenic, including formaldehyde, phenol, methanol, and glycerin. And embalmers have a 13% higher death rate eight times higher risk of contracting leukemia, and a three times higher risk of contracting ALS or other autoimmune and neurological diseases. And then after that, once you're placed in the ground, you're kind of there forever. And these coffins aren't perfect. They have been known to, to leak, and these embalming fluids can get into the soil and sometimes into the groundwater that we then drink. So a lot of people pick cremation as a better option. And the cool thing about that, I guess, is that you can be put into an urn and people can keep that urn and use that as a way to assuage their, their grief over time. Or they can scatter your ashes in a place that they can go visit regularly in a little sprinkling ceremony. But cremation has its own problems. It uses a lot of energy and just like anything else that gets burned, it produces emissions. Emissions like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrochloric acid, sulfur dioxide, dioxin, polychlorinated dibenzodioxins, and polychlorinated diberfensifrins. And if the body's burned with amalgam dental fillings, it can actually release mercury vapor into the air. And if the body's embalmed and then burned, which, why, then all of that toxic and carcinogenic embalming fluid can get pumped up into the atmosphere for the rest of us to enjoy. I mean, I guess many, many years later, if they needed to clean out a cemetery and decided to cremate the bodies that were in there, that might happen. Now, all of this might feel trivial when you think about how much of this just one body produces, but there are 7.8 billion people on the planet, and they're all gonna die. There are roughly 2.8 million deaths in the US alone each year. This adds up. It adds up to 77,000 trees for 20 million boards for caskets, enough concrete to go from San Francisco to Kansas City on a two-lane highway, or pave a sidewalk to the moon 28 times, six Olympic-sized swimming pools, or 4.3 million gallons of formaldehyde, which is carcinogenic, and 150 million tons of casket steel, enough to build most of the high-rises in Tokyo. The environmental impact of the funeral industry is vast. In fact, one might say the funeral industry is burying us. So if you want to be environmentally conscious when it comes your time to meet your old pets at the Rainbow Bridge, there are some options. The first option is just what they call a green burial, and the green burial is basically just the way we used to be buried. You no know, getting your gut sucked out and all that. In this option, the grave is more shallow than normal burials, and this gives more opportunity for oxygen to get in there and for more decomposition to take place. Nature spent about four billion years in R&D on decomposing things. In fact, it only takes about four months before the flesh is gone completely and just a skeleton remains. The shallow depth also allows for aerobic decomposition as opposed to anaerobic decomposition, which can often breed viruses. And usually these green cemeteries are just sort of natural areas with minimal landscaping, so you don't have the energy that goes into maintaining a normal cemetery. So instead, your family can just kind of walk down a path in a forest and stop at a rock that has your name on it. They just use natural rocks instead of using a gravestone, again, for environmental purposes. 
The next one is called Promession, which is kind of the opposite of cremation, whereas instead of being burned and turned into ashes, you're actually frozen with liquid nitrogen and then crumbled up into dust. This dust can then be buried or put into an urn just like a cremation, or some people choose to kind of scatter it in a garden so that some plants can make use of your nutrients, the whole circle of life thing. Now, an interesting point about this method is that they can actually separate out the heavy metals that have accumulated in your body, which we actually have a fair amount of. Maybe it's enough to make a piece of jewelry if you wanted to? Or, hey, you could donate your body to a body farm. This is exactly what it sounds like. A uh, body farm is a place where bodies are left out in various configurations to more closely study the process of decomposition. Knowing the ins and outs of decomposition is critical to the field of forensics, which has brought closure to millions of families around the world who have lost loved ones in violent or mysterious circumstances. Fun fact, the largest body farm in the world is right here in Texas. It's at a place called the Freeman Ranch. It's 26 acres and it's run by the University of North Texas, which is actually my alma mater. So this is basically like donating your body to science, which of course you can also do. By the way, something that I learned while researching this is that the study of death and dying is called thanatology, which is clearly where Thanos got his name in the Marvel universe. I had no idea. Another eco-death idea is a mushroom suit. A company called Coeo has developed a suit lined with mushroom spores that will drastically increase the amount of decomposition of your body, which is another fancy way of saying that they eat you. But while doing so, it also takes care of all the nasty stuff inside our bodies, like those heavy metals or microplastics as well. Coeo actually went further and actually developed their own strain of mushroom that's specially engineered to decompose human bodies in the safest and fastest way possible. The suit would put you back about $1,500 and then another $1,500 for the burial, but um, as opposed to regular burial practices, that's actually a bargain. And finally, there's a process called aquamation, also known as water cremation. It's a simple solution of 95% water and 5% potassium hydroxide. They then heat that up to 365 degrees Fahrenheit and drop the body in. And yeah, the flesh just kind of comes right off the body. It turns into a skeleton in a matter of hours. It's the ultimate cleanse. The resulting water is then safe enough to just go straight into the sewer and then the bones are ground up and then that can be given to the families to do with it whatever they want. Now all this can be done in a couple of hours for the water part of it. The bones might take a few days to dry, but it takes a lot less energy than regular cremation, making it a lot more environmentally friendly. The only drawback is it's not a very standard practice, so you might not be able to find that everywhere. And there are also various ways of, of taking your remains, whatever it is that you wind up doing with them, and, and planting it underneath the tree. And then the tree can use those remains as nutrients to grow. And I, I kind of like this idea, you know, that people can come and visit this tree, kind of feel like they can connect with you, maybe sit under your shade someday. I don't know, it's, it's poetic. But let's just say you're more of an artist and a weirdo than an environmentalist, and you want to do something really creative and interesting with your body. Well, there's a lot of options for that as well. You can have your body turned into glass art. A company called Artful Ashes will turn your ashes into a glass artwork of whatever kind you want for as low as $75. If you want your very German grandfather turned into a giant beer glass, you can do that if you want. Thanks, Grandpa. A company called Eternal Reefs will turn your body into a living reef in the ocean. It costs about $3,000, so not too bad, but hey, you get, to, you get to be a home for little fishies and corals and stuff. A company called Life Gem will turn your body into a diamond for about $750, which is not too bad. You know, I brought up earlier, maybe your metals could be turned into a piece of jewelry. Here's another way of doing that. And you can have your remains shot into space. I'm sure some of you nerds that watch this channel would be into that. There are a few companies that offer this service, including Elysium Space, Beyond Burials, and Celestis. You can get yourself put into a permanent Earth orbit, a moon orbit, or just shot as far away from Earth as possible and roam around the solar system for eternity. Or if you want to go out with a bang, you could be put on a trajectory to burn up in the atmosphere and basically turn into a shooting star. That might make a pretty awesome funeral, actually. Assuming it's not cloudy. Or if you really want to go out with a bang, you could be turned into fireworks. A company called Heavens Above Fireworks can shoot you up into the sky and blow you up so you can recreate the national anthem. They can also do it for your pets as well. Which is actually kind of ironic because dogs hate fireworks. And last but not least, you can be pressed into a vinyl record. Which is actually kind of cool. 
So if you want to go out with a final album drop, a company called Vinylli can do that for you. Um, if you're a big music lover, it might be your favorite album that could be turned into. Or uh, if you're a musician, it could be some of your own music. Or you could record a, a farewell message that could be played off of it. Actually, I don't know if that's really cool or really creepy. Death is not easy to talk about. I wasn't really thrilled about recording this, if I'm going to be honest with you. But it is something we should probably prepare for if for no other reason than to take the pressure off of our loved ones to make that decision for us, which is usually why embalming gets picked anyway. Like I said, it's, it's not really for us, it's for them. But you do have a lot of choices. There's many different ways to be buried as there are people in the world. So whatever it is that's meaningful to you, you can have that reflected in your big send-off. So make it a good one. Also, if you're looking for some comfortable underwear to be buried in, you might want to check out Mack Weldon. Oh, and you don't have to wait for your funeral. You can wear them while you're alive. In fact, I, I recommend that. Mack Weldon. Underwear. For living people. I've talked about Mack Weldon before. Mack Weldon makes insanely comfortable underwear, and they make sure they're insanely comfortable by actually designing their own fabric. They created a few different types of fabric, actually. You've got your dry knit, your air knit, warm knit. They even have a series called the Silver Series, which is treated with silver, so it's antimicrobial, which means they remain odor-free. I've got several pairs of Mack Weldon boxer briefs, and, and actually, yes, I'm wearing some right now. And they didn't just stop with underwear. They make shirts, shorts, pants, hoodies, jackets, hats, scarves, gloves, slippers. If you've got body parts, they've got a covering for it. The buying process is super easy online. They deliver fast. They even offer a no questions asked refund if you don't like the first item you buy from them. And if you like their products, and you will, and you want to buy more in the future, they've got a new loyalty program called Weldon Blue to make that even easier and save you money. When you sign up for Weldon Blue, you get free shipping for life. That's level one. But after you spend $200, you get to level two, which gives you 20% off every order for the next year. So if you want to give it a try and see for yourself, just go to macweldon.com slash joescott, then enter the promo code joescott at checkout, and you'll get 20% off your first order. And if you don't like your first pair, for whatever reason, again, they will refund your money. So you really got nothing to lose. Anyway, link's in the description, but one more time, it's macweldon.com slash joescott. Go check it out. I think you'll like it. All right, thanks to Mac Weldon for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon that are building an awesome community, supporting me and each other, and I really love you guys. Um, by the way, I always get comments in the comments where people are saying, how come these people are able to comment early when the video just came out? Well, that's because they're Patreon supporters and channel members. So if you wanna be able to do that as well, Here's how you do it. But we got some new people. I want to murder their names real quick. We got Mirik Gogri, uh, Stan Saluda, Gabby Duro, Jeremiah Mack, Colin McVeigh, Reed Bowman, Mike Reed, Patrick Olson, S.M. Pace, Ethan Leger, I think, and Emily Cruxall. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, get early access and all that crazy stuff, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. T-shirts available at the store at answerswithjoe.com slash store. There's also hats, hoodies, stickers, mugs, all kinds of stuff with cool, fun, geeky things that make people go, ah, and you like it when people do that. So go check it out for yourself. It does support the channel as well and an artist that lives in Prague who does this awesome work for us. So uh, again, answerswithjoe.com slash store. Please like and share this video if you liked it and if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video. Google thinks you'll like that one or any of the others down here on the side. I got my face on them. And if you enjoy them and you want to see them whenever I birth them out, you can go and subscribe. And I screwed that up. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, Google thinks you'll like that one. So clicky on that thing. Uh, any of the others have my face on it. You can go check those out. And if you enjoy them, uh, I invite you to subscribe because then you'll be the first to see them. I come out with videos every Monday. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.